Question four. What's the most significant advancement in carbon science since the discovery of buckyballs? Professor Rasat, University of Malaya. Um, that's a tricky one. In the case of uh, the C60, the most important um, aspect of it, apart from the fact that you know there are something like a thousand pa papers in, chemistry, in the chemistry of C60 per year, so it's opened up a whole new area of 15 to 20,000 papers in the last 20 years, since 1990. Um, the most important aspect of it is that it, we started to understand uh, bottom-up self-assembly nanotechnology, what happens when a uh, atoms self-assemble bottom-up um, and we now realize that we have to take into account uh, structure on a nanoscale in a way we hadn't really appreciated. We should have done because it's so simple. I mean the example I have I would use is uh, water droplets. If you have a large amount of water it's pulled flat by gravity but if you have a small drop, then surface tension effects are more important and you get a spheroidal uh, bubble, or not a bubble, but a, a sort of droplet. Same is true of carbon. If you have a small number of carbon atoms, um, they're not flat as they are in graphite or three-dimensional crystal, as in the case of um, diamond. But as you assemble them bottom-up, um, certainly in the regime between 30 and 100 or maybe even 1,000 atoms, uh, closed spheroidal cages, uh, fullerenes, are um, the order of the day. They're the most f stable form. So if I give you 60 carbon atoms, it's not a diamond structure or a graphite structure. Uh, partly it won't be graphite, as you can see, because the edges will have dangling bonds and that's an instability. But if you close it up, you get the energy back from the 22 to 20 or, or more uh, dangling bonds on the edge, and they close up and that's what happens. And so C60 is the most stable form of 60 carbon atoms. Uh, since then, of course, when um, Kretschmann Huffman showed that you could make C60 in quite good yield, um, the nanotubes were rediscovered. Uh, Sumi Ojima found that you could make them there, and uh, they had been seen by um, uh, Morinobo Endo some years before, um, uh, but now it was possible to make them in higher yield. And uh, now a lot of study of nanotubes in various materials and composite materials in particular are going to probably break through in the next few years. It's tricky because there's a lot of, um, in, has been a lot of investment in other technologies before that. But I think in the next five years we'll see a breakthrough in composite materials involving nanotubes. And of course graphene has uh, been detected, has been made, and people are looking at that very carefully as well. And that looks interesting because you could probably imagine synthesizing polycyclic, large polycyclic aromatic um, structures, um, graphene equivalents, uh, and then you could have very good, good control at the molecular level of their properties. Um, but for me, the biggest breakthrough has been that of Cami and colleagues uh, who have detected uh, C16 in interstellar space. In fact, I. I predicted this in the Horizon pro program in 91 or 92, uh, or maybe it's something like that. Um, I had the last word in that one, and the, whoever was asking me, I said, I think it's in interstellar space, and the announcer said, well, it doesn't look anything like that, and I said, well, we have C6 in, we have done the like it. I said, well, they're wrong, because I don't think they'd thought it through. I think. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous question, I think C60 um, derivatives can have features, uh, are likely to have features similar to the diffuse bands. And 500 have been detected uh, up to now, so there's a lot of stuff out there. Uh, there's a lot of it around. <laughs>